Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest. Series 9, Book 2, Minus the Demon Bull. And as you can tell by the title, and by the review, and, yeah, and by the book of course, this is the 50th book, and of course, my 50th review on Beast Quest. So, of course, this is a quite an accomplishment. First of all, I, if people have been watching uh, my Beast Quest reviews, I want to say thank you for um, staying with me and watching them all the way through. Or if you've watched them one by one and just picked up, I'm glad to see you've made it all the way to review number 50. So, with that being said, I'm going to break it down to the overall story and, of course, get my overall thoughts on this book. Alright, let's do this. For the 50th time, Beast Quest. Tom and Anna head on their quest to stop Malabar from destroying the Warlock Staff and tossing it into the Eternal Flame. They had, they had to be ready, as he could turn, it, turn any simple creature into a deadly beast. When they prepared their, for shelter, they sensed a storm is coming. No doubt the work of Malabar to slow down our heroes. Just then, a tree came crashing down upon them. Storm avoided the tree. After after a while facing the storm, they encountered Malvel with the Warlock's staff. He bragged about how they couldn't beat him. Now Adro was dead, and Tom vowed he would beat them. Yeah, beat them. Malvel got pissed and sent the lightning, lightning coming after them their way. Yeah. So Tom charged through, facing the storm, dodging the lightning bolts. Eventually, Malvel made a craters all around the area. Tom also claimed he would destroy Malvel this time, which does indicate that Tom does want to kill Malvel. Also, Tom noticed a shadowy figure in the distance. So, it does add to the... A while back on the Ursus, I said they want, they had to end him for good, and I didn't... It was indicating they wanted to kill him, but this, of course, fully admits that they do want to kill him. Well, Tom does, at least. And, yeah. So, and where Tom and... and, and yeah, no, Tom... Yeah, Tom and Storm, sorry. And where Tom and Storm were standing, standing, Malva destroyed the ground which they were standing on, and Tom and Storm fell. Eleanor attempted a rescue only to have her ledge break and, as well. Eleanor, Tom, Storm and Silver all fell. Tom was the first to wake up from his fall, second was Eleanor, then Storm and Silver joined them. Malva had left, it, left, Eleanor assumed he had come to the conclusion that the heroes were dead. But when Tom searched the saddlebag, it was empty. He remembered the person in the storm. He assumed it was Petra. So they used Storm to get... No, not Storm, Silver, to get their scent from the bag and chase her down. They reached some plains and saw the thief on the run. Eleanor let out a warning shot, and Tom ha had the thief only to reveal it wasn't Petra, but a girl Tom had never seen before. So, Tom apologized for assuming her to be someone else. She explained she stole the tokens as she thought they were food and the riders had died in the storm. She was hoping to give the food, this food to her mother, who was trapped under the, their wrecked home, which Minus the Demon Bull had destroyed. She also explained that Minus changed when a young woman fed the bull strange food. Tornella knew it was Petra. They got to the village and rescued the girl's mother. And they also healed her using the combination of the green jewel to heal her broken bones and Epos' healing talent. But then Minus had returned and was charging it right at them. Tom faced Minus on the ground while Eleanor was trying to shoot up arrows from the from her vantage point. While the villagers remained safe in their hut, however, Eleanor's arrows seemed to have no effect as they bounced right off Minus, his thick hide, of course. Tom had an idea and created a second shield made of grass, which actually proved very useful. It avoided Minus it avoided Minus once, and on the second time, he used it to blind Minus, allowing Tom to get his to get on his back. Eventually, um, he was booked off, and Tom was right under the beast. Silver came to help before Minus could tram be trampled. You know, Minus could be trampled, Tom. But soon Silver was tossed off. But Tom had been given enough time to jump out of the way, only to be knocked by one of Minus's horns as he performed his jump. He wobbled, trying to steady himself, but then Minus used his tail to coil up Tom's legs, and Minus began man, to drag Tom across the ground. I think this has happened before with, um, Tigus, maybe? Um, Tom was be beginning, was being dragged, of course, through the village, despite Eleanor's efforts to save Tom. The arrows bounced off Minus's hide, but eventually Tom got his sword back. As he was being dragged with all his strength, he cut Minus's tail off. The beast ran off in, in pain while Tom untangled the tail from his legs. 
Tongan decided since they didn't know which token to use, an option was to try and communicate to Minus and calm the beast down to allow Tom to put a rope on him. And they tried it for a couple of minutes and it appeared to be working until Petra shows up on Noctis and whipped the beast to attack them. Back under the spell, Minus was ready to fight. At least it was a nice attempt to try something else, you know, besides the tokens. Even if it was a fail attempt, it was still nice to see other ways of do dealing with beasts. Tom was, avo was avoiding Minus' attacks, and then Elena helped out making Minus back off. Tom had figured out a plan to beat Minus, and he believed that the harness was the right tool for, the beast, for this beast. But then Jenka and her mother came out, and Minus went after them. Tom called for Storm and rode on, rode on after them. Eventually, he got there and coiled the remains of Minus' tail on him. Tom was flung off Storm, and he had plummeted to the ground again. He keeps flinging to the ground and stuff. Tom nudged the side and prepared to his plan by asking Ellen to ride Storm as a decoy while Tom climbed the totem pole in the village. When Minus passed, passed by Tom, he leapt, eventually securing the harness on Minus. On Minus. He then le le lured him back around towards the totem pole and flipped over his face, also loosening his sword. Yeah, he lost his sword in the process. Tom wrenched on Minus' horns and... Eleanor told Tom he, he has to get out of there or he could be killed within the impact because he's heading right for the turning pole and if he hits it's going to smash, boom. Of course Tom gets out there as the last possible moment and the turning pole broke. After his magic had taken effect and Minus had been reverted back to his normal size. Tom removed the harness. I'm unsure if Tom still has the harness or he left it behind. But anyway, Minus is free from Petra's magic and brings back the cattle which also brings back the villagers who see the cattle as well. Tom explains how Minus acted this way. They offered a feast for their victory, but of course, Tom declines, saying their quest is more important. You know, at this point, I rolled my eyes. At this point, I got sick of Tom ignoring hospitality after being a beast. We all know how hard it is for a young warrior and his companions to do a, to do this. Luckily, Jenka's mother insists they take a food bag with them for their journey, so I'm glad that this book acknowledges that. So, thank you. They ride off and see a vision of Malvel, but before they could react to it, it faded, hearing a distant laugh of Petra. Their quest wasn't over, it had only just begun. And with that, guys, that is the 50th Beast Quest review acknowledged in all story. Overall, this is easier, better than Ursus, because one, it focuses more on the beast, because it doesn't rely on setup. But there are a few other little tiny details that I like about it that are finally acknowledged here. Or they might have been a lot acknowledged previously, but I think this one does it right. Tom, and many, many quests, does ignore hospitality, always puts the quest first. But I like to see there are some compassionate people who do take effort in all his work. So it's nice to have, dude, just take a break, you need the energy. If you want to get, I mean, I know you want to beat the beast quest and all that, but you need energy in order to do that. So please, take the hint. So... Yeah, that's good. Um, also, in this book, Tom gets tr nearly trampled on Minus uh, quite a few times. It's very intense, actually. And um, luckily, he's able to outthink it, and he does get more creative by using other plans besides the tokens with the um, jewels he had before. And uh, Eleanor got a bit of a back roll this book, but it was nice to see Tom doing other means of stopping the job. Yep. Um, I'm unsure if he left the harness behind, or oh, also Minus' tail got cut off, I'm assuming that healed after the spell broke, hopefully. Either way, Minus the Demon Bull is a vast improvement from Ursus, because one isn't really set up and it does acknowledge a few things that not only in Series 9 has, but overall the series problem was, as I've stated before. Still, that is an obvious reason to call this an awesome book as well as it being the 50th one, and I believe our next review will be Koraka, if I'm pronouncing that name right, but I'm going to pronounce it that way anyway. So until next time guys, like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and thank you for sticking with me and watching 50 reviews of the Beast Quest series. But that being said, until next time guys, peace.